Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at making audio submixes in Adobe Premiere Pro. A submix will help you make your audio sound more natural, more realistic, and just give you overall control. Typically, when you're adding tracks in Premiere Pro, the tracks go directly to the master output. But if you add a submix, then you can route the tracks to the submix before they go out to the master. You also have the option of sending how much signal goes out to that. So I'm going to play you something with a bit of uh, uh, sound effects of Foley. We've got footsteps and rustling and room noise, and it's lacking some kind of realism. It's lacking a little bit of uh, reverb and natural. We're going to create a submix and then control it that way. So let's play it back as is. So you can hear it's it's a little bit brittle. I mean, the, the footsteps sound like they're recorded with a microphone right next to a foot, and they should sound like they're being recorded in front of the camera a little further away. So they're not very natural. So if you don't have the track mixer up in the window menu, open up the track mixer. And here I've created uh, four tracks, the footsteps on one, the door on another, the court coat and room noise, and it all goes out to the master. If you twirl this down, this is typically how people will get to the effects section, but below that you can see divided in here is the submix section. And here we can typically go out to the master or we can create a new submix that's either mono, stereo, or 5.1 or adaptive. I'm going to create a stereo submix. And you see over here on the right, a new submix uh, was created. And this submix is going out to the master. So right now, this one is going to the submix, but this value here is setting what's known as the wet and dry level. A wet level means how much of the effect. A dry level means less of the effect. So by default, with that knob turned all the way to the left, it's not sending anything over to the submix. So we've got to drag that all the way over to the right. I'll add the same submix here. I don't have to create it. Once I've created it, I can pick it. So there's my submix one. And I'll send that over, submix, and crank those out. Now you'll notice, I'll twirl this up for a second, you'll notice that the fader, you'll see them playing in the submix too. You'll also notice everything got much, much louder. That's because we've got four tracks being played twice. So everything is louder. So we're going to turn that down in a second. So let's go back to our effects, and we're going to add an effect on the new submix track. So for this track, I'm just going to grab a convolution reverb, and I'll double click on that, and I'm going to go to Bitter Hallway, and this sets a bunch of, of these values in here to give us a certain sound. So I'll play this back now from the beginning. All right, instantly you can see everything sounds better, and it sounds better for two reasons. First of all, we have reverb, so instead of the footsteps ending, they're going into reverb, so it sounds more natural. But more importantly, all of these separate sounds are now mixed together in one track. It just can't help but sound more natural when they're all being in one track. So with the wet value of every single one of those uh, sends going to the submix at 100%, we can control how much reverb we have by changing the fader for the submix. So I'm going to turn this all the way down, and then I'll turn it up. It's so much easier to control multiple tracks with one fader. And typically, this is how it's done in music. If you've recorded a drum kit with maybe 10 or more microphones, you don't want to edit all of those. So you send them over to a submix, and you're controlling the whole drum kit with one submix. There's another important factor, and that's pre fader or post fader. So if you right click on a submix track, you'll see pre-fader and post-fader. I'm going to leave mine on post-fader. So with uh, post-fader, that means 
pay attention to the value I've set so that you send the, an equal amount out to the submix. Pre-fader means that it won't be influenced by the fader amount. So if I adjust the fader volume, pre-fader is gonna send the whole signal all the way out and it's really hard to mix that. So we'll leave those all the way they are. And now I'll control this. I'm gonna take all of these values down. I'm gonna leave the submix reverb at zero. Maybe take the door squeak down a little bit. One more time. And I've got full control in the effect for that submix. So if I wanted to try a completely different sound, so here's a distant sound preset. Maybe that one's a little bit more natural. Um, how about in a smoky bar? Actually, that one sounds very intimate and very, very close. So we've got those options to make those changes any way we want. I'm gonna go back to mine, which was the better hallway. Now, there's one thing I'm gonna show you, and if, if you're an audio person, maybe you heard this, but uh, the footsteps are not a continuous audio file, they end. And there's one shortcoming of doing this in Premiere Pro, this doesn't happen in Audition or other uh, digital audio workstations, is the effect only happens inside uh, the, the clip when it's playing. And typically with reverb, when a footstep hits, the reverberation of the sound will continue past the clip. I'm gonna isolate the footsteps and, and let you hear this. This is with the effect. I'm gonna not isolate that and hear how it doesn't sound as bad when you play everything. So it's a little bit uh, harder to, to hear that anomaly uh, when all of those tracks are playing. But let me give you a little fix for that. If you export out a file that's just silent, so just mark a section in your timeline, spit it out as a WAV file or an AIF, and just make it complete silence, nothing in it. So I've got one of those right here, and I'll drag this down to a new track. I'll copy these, which are the footsteps. I'm gonna track target this new one, which is A5. I'll paste that in. So here's A5. Let's send A5 out to the submix. Let's crank this all the way. And I'll mute the footsteps that I had before. Well, actually, let's just solo A5. Let me just trim that track a bit. Now let's go back and listen to the original footsteps and the new footsteps. And let's listen to everything together and I'll mute the footsteps that we originally had. Oh, and you notice that audio five is a little bit too loud. So let me take audio five down. So there you go, there's our, our submix. Um, little trick that you can do to, to fix uh, that peculiarity in Premiere Pro, but it works once we drop that in, uh, when, the, when the 
um, the footstep clip ends, that silence clip is right after it. And I couldn't do that just in case you were wondering, how come you don't do that with the room tone? Well, if I did that with the room tone, you'd have room, foot, room, foot, room, foot, and it wouldn't sound um, good. So all of those combined together, stuck in a submix, you can have as many submixes as you want. Uh, you can have some for Foley and sound effects and another one for dialogue. So if you had a bunch of people uh, talking and you wanted to affect um, all of those voices, you can send them to a submix. If you combine this with my other tutorial that, that uh, showed you how to do automation, you can automate all of that. The submixes, just like you can automate a regular track, you can automate all the effects all inside Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, hopefully uh, if you found this informative, you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more like our wonderful folks out there supporting us on PayPal. There's a link in the description or on the front of the page where you can make a one-time donation or a monthly donation and help us keep creating wonderful tutorials. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking and sounding.